Hello, hello, how is everyone? I hope everyone is doing good. Hey guys, my name is Joanna. I'm the creator and founder of Savvy Chic Design and welcome to our special broadcast of Savvy Connection. We are coming to you live here through our channel and YouTube as well as Facebook and will be available on our Apple podcast as well. All right, as you all know, I love everything that has to do with branding and personal branding. If you're one of those who are wondering, right, you've already thought about things that it comes to your visual, your brand, your website, your colors, and everything that you actually learn here in Savvy Chic Design. Now there's going to be a point in we're in, how will you actually show up, dress up, and be more confident, right? So please do let us know where you are tuning from. If you're watching this live, say hi. If you're watching this one on a replay, please do make sure to drop, uh, drop your comment and what you have learned through our podcast. Now, one of the wonderful thing and the power of online, right, is that we get connected with amazing entrepreneurs who are building their brand and really helping others how they will be able to really show up, right? And our special guest is a personal stylist. I've met her through the B-School. So if you're one of those B-Schoolers, please do let us know because we want to make sure that we get connected and also say hi to you all. So our today's guest is going to be teaching us more about how to build our personal brand, right? How to be more confident, how to be able to create that consistency from what you create through the visuals that you create. Like for example, your website, your colors, your branding, right? And transforming it and showcasing it through your personal style and what you wear as well. So with no further ado, of course, let's bring in um, uh, Swapna Patel. Yay. All right. I want to make sure. Hey, how are you? Hi, Joanna. Hey, all right. Well, thank you so much for um, for being with me and for taking the time to actually do this. And because I know a lot of entrepreneurs will be learning. I mean, I've been following you. I've, we've got connected. I love the style that you have helped um, your style and also the style that you have helped your clients because I've been following them and really, you know, checking out. So please do feel free to share more about yourself to our audience. Sure. So um, as Joanna said, um Patel. I live in New Jersey and we connected through Marie Forleo's B-School, uh, which I'm a little bit behind on, but I'm catching up. And uh, what I do in my business is I teach women and I especially love working with female entrepreneurs uh, and I help them look and feel confident without breaking the bank. That's my special sauce. And um, so that they can look, feel confident and show up as the face of their uh, business. And instead of hiding behind their laptops and their sweatpants. <laughs> Yes, yes, especially nowadays, right? I mean, with what's currently going on right now, everyone is on, uh, you know, online doing their business um, at home with kids all around. We don't have time, at, uh, you know, like for us today, we're having our makeup and everything because yeah. we have this broadcast. But yeah. we want to make sure that we continue as well, you know, being able to present our personal brand as well to our audience. Now, um, tell me a little bit, why is it important to actually build your personal style when you're building? your brand and we're talking in particular about personal branding right okay so be before we get into style let's yes. look at what per branding means right what personal branding means so i'm sure you've he heard of seth uh, Godin. he is a celebrated author he is a ted talk uh, speaker and he defines branding as the set of expectations memories stories and relationships that taken um, together account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over the other, you know? So what are the things in our brand that make us different from someone else offering the same um, service? And I think that the imagery we create with our visuals contributes to a lot of this. You know, you may be a very talented um, fitness coach or photographer or uh, branding uh, coach or whatever your profession might be. But if you don't look the part, at least in the beginning, that's gonna, you know, it's like welcoming people into your home, right? Like, yes, after, after a while, you've been best friends with someone, you don't have to tidy up every time when they come over. But at least in the beginning, aren't you going to put some flowers in a vase? or, you know, uh, fluff the pillows or something like that. So think of how you are welcoming your audience into your home. And I think what you wear 
communicates a lot of that, right? So um, in business, how you show up and dress up is like welcoming people in and it brings good energy. So when you, people naturally are drawn to um, good energy and high vibes. And I think the quickest way to get into a good mood, a high vibe is by changing your clothes. <laughs> Yes, that is so true. I mean, um, for me personally, you know, building your personal brand and your mm -hmm. style. Um, mm -hmm. because when we are building our personal style or branding, especially me, particularly, I am a lover of graphics, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the reason why you're doing that is you want to create the familiarity of your audience. Right. That when they think of something or they think of certain color, they think of a certain maybe a skirt or a style of a pants or a um, texture uh, or a design of a fabric they resonate with you right away mm -hmm. and you know and and funny thing before this actually before this we were discussing that it doesn't even have to correlate to what you're doing as a business mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur right tell right. us a little bit about that because you've shared well, that one with yes so you know i think um how we dress is a part of nonverbal communication. And did you know, like, obviously, we all know that we only have one chance to make a first impression. But like that first impression is very valuable, you know, and um, how are we going to show up? You're not good, going to go to meet someone in your pajamas. So even if you're working from home, you should not probably uh, be doing that. And so that's why um, I help or you identify things that are going to make your personal brand memorable. So I'll tell you what, like, for example, I always have bold lipstick on. Yes. I love color. I sometimes will not even have any other makeup on, but Excellent. lipstick is my thing. So I always have it. And it has nothing to do with my clothes. I just feel good when I wear bold colors, you know, and I'm not afraid to show up. And color does that. So uh, that's like a simple, I call it a trigger, you know, in branding, you've heard the word trigger a yes. lot. So uh, that is a trigger. Like now people tell me like, whenever I see a lipstick ad, I always think mm -hmm. of you. whenever I see something that's related to lip product, I think of you. So they don't need to think of me so that they can hire me. But eventually, you know, that impact builds up when pe you're in people's mind. And one of the ways you can do that, make that impact is by, um, showing up for the job at hand. Yes, yeah. that is. Yeah, that is so true. Because, you know, the, the impact that it really creates as well, right? right? That is the main goal that we have. Now, uh, when we think about personal style, right, we've mm -hmm. mentioned it a, a little bit, talk a little bit about it. I always think of wardrobe. We've already talked about, you know, the how we dress up, how we show up, what what type of things that we actually don't know. How can I build, mm -hmm. um, like me, like what you said, right? You don't have to break a bank to actually mm -hmm. really have wonderful wardrobes, right? And I'm such a savvy, you know, we always have anything that has to do with savvy things. We want to make sure that we work within a budget, right? right. So how can I build my basic um, and investment pieces as well? Okay, so before we even get into that, I want you to think of some things before you head off to Target or TJ Maxx or hop online in the current climate. Um, think of some of the things uh, that will help you identify or pinpoint some of your uh, brand style or personal style. So firstly, you want to ask yourself, what makes me feel like myself? And the answer to that is not sweatpants and leggings and no bra. Like, sorry, ladies, that's unacceptable. So think of what makes you feel really good. Think of who are your clients? Who is your audience? And how do you serve them? OK, um, another fun exercise, and this is really exciting and super fun to do, is whose brand style inspires me. Think of some icons and you know exactly what to expect with them. Let's look at Lady Gaga, for example. Right. You know that she's going to have like some really um, out there hair, probably some really insane eye makeup. She always wears very edgy, borderline eccentric outfits you know that she will not like disappoint when it comes to her outfit. You That's know what true. to expect from her. Am I right? Okay, now let's look at our next example. Michelle Obama, one of my favorites. I love her style. She's a mom. Um, she's, you know, and uh, she has she wears many hats. She's a lawyer by education. Uh, she was obviously the first lady. And she would actually wear things like shorts from J. Crew and a T-shirt from Gap and show up. And I think that's what made her relatable. Like, yes, she's a first lady. Yes, she had a stylist, but she brought her own flavor to it. She's always elegant. She um, wears a 
broad range of um, designers. It's not just like she wears things from one label only. Um, she, if you've noticed, uh, she, and she even talks about it in her book, but she loves wearing um, immigrant designers, minority designers, and that's what her style is, you know, and that's how she is as a person. So if you see how she's using her clothes to make a statement about her beliefs and values, that's like a great example right there. Uh, next, another person I love is uh, Reese Witherspoon. I mean, how can you not love her, right? Um, sweet, Southern girl, like charming, um, elegant, like classy, uh, a little bit preppy. Like if you see her colors, she wears a lot of navy, a lot of pink. Uh, she always has like a fun lip color going on. Very girl next door, but polished style. So look for those icons. And then look for the common threads in all of those when you decide what to wear. Now, let me give you an example of my uh, client and friend, Yahi. Her name is uh, Yahi Kramer. She is an accountant. And she is not your traditional accountant because she actually works with female entrepreneurs and especially creatives, right? So I call her, like, she. we, we joke that she's the CFO to our CEO. So she really deals with the numbers part of everyone's business. But just because that's her profession, like when you think of a traditional accountant and what comes to your mind, her image is actually very feminine, vibrant, and empowering. I asked her, I said, what are the three things you would define in your brand? What's your brand, right? So she said it's feminine, vibrant, and empowering. And you can see um, this is her brand photo shoot, and it represents that beautifully. I mean, it's true. The feminine, vibrant, and empowering. Powering. And I like that one as well, because, you know, when we are building, for example, your your branding, your brand mm -hmm. visual, right, or to make sure that your your brand statement and everything that has to do the back end of your brand mm -hmm. resonate with it. We always use like keywords, right, to represent mm -hmm. and feminine, vibrant and empowering. And I love how it is tied up as well with the style that we have. What is yeah. it that we would like to 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 showcase to our people? And I think one of the things that I was also thinking um Swapna is that you know how it is sometimes especially as women if we're not really like really brought up in a sense like hey we want to feel beautiful in what we wear you know confident as well sometimes like what if I wear this one or, or I get styled right away like will people kind of think you know the other way around am I like showcasing or am I still uh, showcasing my true self and I've shared this with you it's like you mm -hmm. know it's just like a flower watering it you're just making yourself bloom more with confidence with what you wear right and I think the the thing here to think of is that we are not changing anyone's style mm -hmm. we're just bringing it out and I yes. really believe that everybody knows what works for them they're just scared to really own uh, own it and step into that identity, you know? And unless someone says that to your face, I say you just ignore it and move on and just work on raising your voice. You know, I love it. Wrong can come along with you. There right? you go. I love it. And you've actually shared as well, like investment items for your wardrobe, right? We're going to give them four tips. I've, uh, I'm just going to show, and you've actually mentioned the very first thing, like yeah. some of the tips, guys. Listen on because the very first tip, I kind of like, hmm, what, am I wearing, you know, this <laughs> one that is really confident? All right. So tip number one is actually. Finding a good bra. So I cannot stress the importance of this, okay? So if you want a, a good bra can make your $10 Target t-shirt look like a $150 t-shirt, okay? Because what a good bra does is keeps everything where it needs to be mm -hmm. and it actually smooths things out too. So like, you know, you don't have to worry about back rolls or, you know, things like uh, overflowing, the, the cups overflowing or anything like that because a good bra, and I think it's so worth making the investment. Uh, good bras don't come, come cheap and they definitely don't come from Victoria's Secret. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because actually the first thing, okay, should I go to Victoria's Secret, but they're closed maybe online? Yeah, uh, like, yeah, because it's really true. I mean, that really holds us together. It creates yeah. posture of confidence, yeah. you know, when it's really yeah. good, when you're comfortable, because I really have experience, like, you know, when falling there or like, you know, love handles at the back is not really being in place, right? It's really, it's really hard as well. So that makes a big, big difference in mm -hmm. how your clothes are going to look 
fit and more importantly how you're going to feel i guarantee you you're going to stand up a little bit taller yes shoulders are going to go where they need mm -hmm. to go and you're going to feel amazing about yes. about everything and yes. i i consider it as you know in construction you need a solid foundation mm -hmm. and then you start your building your building on top of that i equate um good undergarments to a good foundation and you will hear a lot of stylists say this as well mm -hmm. but it really is you know you can um wear like a really nice dress and if yeah. you have the wrong bra it's just going to ruin the look completely That's and true. especially on camera you know like in the light and stuff like that if mm -hmm. you're going to get pictures taken everything like highlights so those little things if you pay attention to them they go a long way that's true. That's true. Tip number two as well, you've mentioned about good jewelry and good quality shoes. Yes, absolutely. So I am a big fan of jewelry. And I think before we hopped on this uh, call, I was telling you that um, I always think it's not just about your tops or bottoms, but it's about the third piece that really pulls your outfit together. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, uh, good jewelry is one of those. I think uh, I give this example of cupcakes. I mean, who doesn't love cupcakes, right? So, you know, a cupcake is nice as it is. And then you add a little frosting and it makes it appetizing. But then when you put sprinkles or some fun toppings or a little cherry on top, doesn't that make you feel like, oh my gosh, I really need to reach in and grab that right now? Think of your jewelry, shoes, or handbags, like the accessories category that really does that for your um, outfit and for your body. Yes, because a while ago, actually, when we were preparing, we we're, you know, making sure technical stuff is working, you were wearing a different necklace and right. then you kind of just switch it off. I said, like, you know what? It it creates a different look and right. it really does help. It, yeah. That's why me, myself, I love I, I love earrings. I love something that is a bit bigger because it kind of right. accentuates it or right. something just, you know, I could wear the same top with a different necklace or earrings. It just gives that certain okay. style, right? And actually, here's another um, tip when you are doing your branding and let's mm -hmm. say um, your brand color is aqua or yes. red or whatever. But if you wear, uh, you don't always have to wear a red shirt or an aqua jacket, but you can bring it in in tiny things like maybe a turquoise necklace or, you know, coral earrings or something like that. Mm -hmm. That brings your brand color into your um, visuals without trying too hard. And it's just subtle and it's there, but it's a fantastic little detail. I love that one. I love that one. Because when we had the conversation, um, I remember, guys, so if you are, of course, we're here in Savvy Chic Design. So all of the things I had my brand photo shoot, I've asked someone to take a picture. And I was really like, I went to Pinterest to gather like, you know, how, what, like wardrobes. But after that, I was thinking, should I buy? Should I shop for it? And then I realized, you know what, since I'm building my personal brand, let me go ahead and look at my closet. What are the things that kind of resonate with me? It doesn't have to be like the really on brand with the colors that I have visually, but somehow has that hint of colors or personality or accessories that we have. So that is really that is really a good point as well. So tip number three, you've really did mention. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, uh, the other thing I wanted to um, say when you said about going to your closet first, mm -hmm. this is where I always like to start. OK, because think of when you are driving and you take out, whip out your Google Maps or navigation or whatever. And what's the first thing it asks you? Where are you starting? And the yes. next piece of information is where do you want to go? Right. Yes. So it is important to evaluate where you are right now and then decide where you're going to go and how you're going to get there. That's good. So that I always good love to look at people's closets where they are in terms of their life journey like mm -hmm. if you are a mom who has just given birth six months ago your wardrobe is going to look very different from a from a person like me whose kids are 10 and 6. you know it's my clothes i was not wearing what i wear now when my kids were infants definitely mm -hmm. not you know or what stage of your business you are in are you uh, bootstrapping your budget is going to be very different you know you may have invested heavily in your business you may not really have spent that much on yourself I know that from experience, uh, starting a business is not free or not cheap, you know? That's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, work with what you have. And I really start really there try. and then add add like little things along that's the true. way. That's yeah. true. That's true. Like any other thing as well. And you've actually also mentioned like invest in pieces that can be wear like three different ways. Tell us a little bit about that. So I say you should be able to wear something at least three different ways, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and I think, you know, one of the reasons we end up with 
a lot of clothes yes. like your closet is full and yet you have nothing to wear it's a classic problem and it's because we buy things one off one offs you know when we see oh this is a great top let me grab it but we have no idea what we're going to wear it with so you should be able to wear it at least in like one um casual way one weekend way and when like one sorry one casual weekend way one slightly dressier way and then one like some fun way right so i always say like can you wear it with jeans can you wear it with maybe a pencil skirt or black pants with a blazer if that's your lifestyle um and then can you wear it with a skirt like what else can you do with it so think of that and then this way you get more out of what you already have versus constantly running out and buying a piece for a special occasion and things like that yeah and i'm i'm guilty with that because sometimes like you know there's a special dinner okay let me shop for that special dinner alone without thinking and now i have where will i wear this clothes the next time what event will i wear i love that one and and sometimes it's just so hard to shop you know to shop and just not have no plan which goes to our actually tip no uh, tip number four that you actually said that you know um until you define your style don't go shopping yet and sometimes because i'm guilty with that let's go to tj maxx and then after that um what will i buy again or <laughs> what, what will i like what's my style or and then after that what happened is i don't wear it and i just it's just still in the closet with a tag on it you know um and uh, you know i've i i can completely understand where you're coming from and that's happened to me too so that's why i like i edited my closet at the beginning of the year and i love color Okay, I absolutely love color. I love bold prints and patterns. And yet when I um, organized my closet in my signature system, I found out that I had a lot of neutrals and it was a lot of navy, a lot of white, a lot of black. Now, remember I said I also love jewelry. So uh, great jewelry looks amazing on neutral things, right? So I had not realized how my wardrobe had gotten there. But anyways, when I organized it, and uh, I saw that I had mostly this black, white, blues. I was like, hmm, I really love color. And this is not representing me at all. I started making a conscious effort to buy colorful things. So then I added a pink sleeveless top, a three quarter sleeve like cobalt blue uh, blouse. Um, I found an amazing shirt on J. Crew that's like this pink and red stripes. Um, so now, you know, I'm gradually getting to where I want it to be. So I can still mix and match those pieces with the neutrals that I already own, but I'm being more strategic because guess what? If I just go to any store, and start saying, oh, I just need a few new tops. You know what's gonna happen? I'm probably gonna end up buying more black, more navy blue, and more stripes. I think I have like six stripe tops. I love yes. this too. As you can see, I'm even wearing like a stripe. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm guilty with that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and then eventually I really did say, because you've mentioned it to me, Joanna, I think solid colors, bold colors work work on you. Mm -hmm. And the brand that I've actually built is more of the like the neutrals, the pink, the blues, mm -hmm. you know, the cream type, the peach. Mm -hmm. And then when I look at my closet, it's actually red, a um, mustard yellow, blue, navy blue. And it really is comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. So I kind of really love that one as well. Now I know moving forward and how to shop, you know, and be consciously just aware because number one is that um it saves you time and it saves you money in the long run which is you know us us women we know how how the bank you know um get involved when we don't know what we're gonna buy as well now let's talk about how about trends you know every year like just like in branding every year there's uh pantone of the year colors of the year style of the year what do you think about following trends for us women and entrepreneurs or in general as well okay so um, trends, you have to be mi mindful of them, yes and no, you know. Um, but let's say, Joanna, in branding, right, like you're designing a website. And mm -hmm. right now, everybody, including myself, has some kind of cursive, handwritten font in their logo or whatever. That, wouldn't you agree, is a trend? Yes, it is. It's mm -hmm. not here to stay forever. But right now, that's what everybody is doing and that, so even in clothes there are things that everybody is doing like if do you ever like go on instagram and follow influencers and sometimes i feel like i'm looking at the same post because it's usually very similar hair similar sure. um colors similar clothing with the same kind of filter right so that's a trend so i don't think 
I think the right trends can work for different people, you know. Uh, I'll give you an example, uh, distressed jeans, like you're seeing those jeans with massive like holes on the legs and I've not bought any. I think I have one pair, but that has like very slight distressing. That's just not who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to intentionally pay for clothes that have so many holes in them. And it's just not my lifestyle. It doesn't accent, uh, positively accentuate my body. Mm -hmm. um, I've never embraced that trend fully, you know. Um, and then it gets old and what are you going to do with all that stuff? So That's I go 80% basics. 20% maybe adding some fun pieces, seasonal pieces, right? Uh, whatever your Pantone color of the year is. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while, remember, everybody was wearing blush everything. Yes, yes. And now it's going to be like neon and tie-dye everything. Mm -hmm. I haven't completely bought into the tie-dye trend. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't want to date myself, but I've also probably done that in the 90s, right? Oh, so yes, yeah. Adding it now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so trends say me too. And mm -hmm. go back to my Instagram influencer example. I'm not trying to bash any influencers, but that's what they are marketing, right? The hottest mm -hmm. right now. But style says only me. Okay. So if you want to stand out and be distinctive, yeah. Um, identify what that style is and then add it in there's nothing wrong with neons like like i told you yeah. i love bright colors so neons are right up my alley but am i just gonna go out and buy six neon things no i might add like a neon earring or you know find some other fun way like a print with some neon flowers in it that I might do because I want to be able to wear my things for a few seasons at least. Yes, yes, that's I true. I want it to be completely disposable fashion all the time. Yeah, because especially here, I mean, I grew up in the Philippines and I've never, I've always had the summer clothes, shorts, yeah. you know, flip flops, anything. Right. And now I have to really constantly, you know, go through the season. And um, it really does get, I mean, retail store gets influenced also our buy, buying of, you know, clothes and everything. But sticking to that one, you said like 80%, you know, the basic, the style mm -hmm. that is reasonable as well. And then the trends mm -hmm. as well, 20%. Now, mm -hmm. um, you've actually mentioned um, some of during our discussion is that creating that certain triggers, you know, kind of just help us more define our yes. style as well, right? And tell us a little bit more about when you say triggers, because funny thing, the word was new to me, but then I realized, you know what? Yeah, that's actually a trigger that I have been doing. I have been wearing. I have been, you know, adding it up. So tell right. us a little bit about that. Um, sure. So, you know, earlier I gave you the example of my friend, Yahi, who's an accountant, and then she had those three words, right? Yes. So now let's take that a step further. So in building your personal brand, and I really think that in uh, modern small businesses, uh, we are our business and our business is us. There's not yes. like a huge uh, distinction. Like we're not like Nike and a person who works at Nike. You know, you are your whole whole person and business are kind of together. Mm -hmm. So for example, the first example here is uh, my friend and client D. That's a picture from her photo shoot. She's a huge Game of Thrones fans. Okay. Um, she uh, calls herself the mother of dragons. I have not watched the show, but you know she talks about it so much that I think I might actually dive in at some point. But she's always talking about Game of Thrones. She gives you a lot of examples in her business coaching that come from that. And also, if you look at her website, she references to it. So basically, the point is she always talks about it, right? So here we um, brought in a fun graphic t-shirt. It says mother of dragons on it. And then um, we, uh, that was kind of like, you know, brings in a little humor, shows off her personality, shows off what other things she's passionate about, right? And then we paired actually the rest of it, the blazer, the jeans, the shoes were all in her wardrobe already. That's not nice. So we nice. took some things she already had. We added a little like whimsy to it with that t-shirt, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the woman in the center. Her name is Teresa and she is a realtor. And the company that she works for, uh, their brand color is yellow. So obviously, like, you know, we wanted to bring in something to tie together her personal brand as a real estate agent to the company that she has her license with. So we brought in that yellow, yellow gold skirt. You see, there's a little bit of yellow in the flowers in her blouse. And also think about the props, right? There's lemons. Yes. So that's another way to bring in 
your brand color is with your props. Uh, the the lovely lady on the far right, her name is Malika. She's wearing a magenta uh, dress, and that is actually her brand color. And she does have a lot of imagery with um, her wearing colors like that. So now whenever I see that magenta fuchsia color, I always think of her. So these are brand triggers. That's something that you wear often enough that people are going to think about you. Here's my, here's my girl, Kate. Uh, Kate is an interior decorator and she's fantastic. She actually did my office and her um, name, business name or Instagram handle is Kate the Decor Horror. So as you can guess, she has like a wild sense of humor. She has a cheeky side and she loves big earrings. Now you can see that she's not a jewelry designer or a jewelry maker or anything like that. She's mm -hmm. an interior designer. But she loves big earrings and she always wears big earrings. She always talks about big earrings. Nothing brings her more happiness than big earrings. Everybody knows that Kate loves big earrings. To a point where someone at Christmas time sent her like different pairs of earrings like every day, like 12 days of Christmas. She got 12 pairs of earrings. She has no idea where they came from. So whenever you see big earrings, you think of my friend Kate because that's her thing, you know? So you have to find that one thing. It does not obviously have to be related to your uh, business, but something mm -hmm. that helps people remember you by, or, you know, will make them smile, or they'll message you from a store and say, hey, Kate, I saw these ridiculously large, fancy pair of earrings, and I thought of you, which is what probably happens to her a lot, right? Because, yes. and then people think of you, and then the more they think of you, the more they remember you, eventually, what are they gonna do? They're probably gonna, when, when they need an interior designer, they're gonna call Kate. When they need um, somebody to help with Canva, they're gonna call you, you know? Yes, so, that, that is so true, and it's really converse, starters as well mm -hmm. you know when you for example you might just be you never know you might be looking for someone they're right fit you're there's someone that you can really work with and then they saw you at a coffee shop they just love how you dress because they resonate with you mm -hmm. you know what you wear is just like branding right you get hired by people who resonates with your brand who mm -hmm. resonates with messes or resonates mm -hmm. with your style mm -hmm. those are the people that are that really kind of understand your your personality and it can right. really create conversation right. and i like that. what i said it to you earlier it's like an invitation right yes. you're inviting people and you know what else i love about um accessories and i talk about accessories a mm -hmm. lot but, but like think about like a really fun pair of shoes um, or fun necklace or an amazing handbag or even your clothes, right? Mm -hmm. yes. you, have you ever been to an in-person networking event? Yes. I consider myself an extrovert and I still sometimes I'm like nervous when I meet like a whole bunch of new people, right? But what I've always found is that it's easy to break the ice when you pay someone a compliment. Yes. It's so easy to say to somebody, oh my gosh, I love your bag or that necklace is gorgeous. Where did you get it from? And you're inviting, like opening yourself. Sometimes you may be on the receiving end, but if you're on the paying end of the compliment, you've just made the person feel really good about themselves and opened up a conversation, you know? Yes. That is so yeah. true. Yeah, because I have, I have, I have, I have experienced that one. It is just so amazing. Then it creates in the, that conversation, builds into a connection, builds right. into that like and trust. Right. And at the long run, because that's, that's actually, it, it's, it's more than just, of course, making us feel comfortable, but also letting others kind of, you know, see how we are at, they get attracted by us. And it, it just really makes us really, really, um, really confident as well. Now, um, we have talked to you about some triggers. We've talked about some styles and some tips as well. Now that there are a lot of entrepreneurs who are working at home, and then you can see, you know, uh, you know, um, pants, shorts, or just like housewares. What tips can you share for female entrepreneurs who work from home? And sure. anything that you can. I think you've mentioned it, but let maybe we'll let us go ahead and just share again to our audience. Okay. So I will say for the ladies who are working from home and especially now that like there's no nowhere else, like you're not working from a Starbucks or going anywhere to work, we're basically stuck at home. Please, please, please get dressed at least four times a week. Okay. One day a week, I give you your sweats and pajamas, but really at least four times a week, put on um, real clothes and work. And I promise you it will 
boost your productivity you will get a lot more done and honestly like i think almost every single uh, business owner i know uh, needs to go either live on facebook or whatever like we are the face of the business right and the um, the more relaxed you are in your dressing the less likely uh, it is that you're going to feel amazing about yourself and if you don't feel amazing you're not going to show up and if you don't show up it's eventually going to hurt your business so get dressed and so when i say get dressed does not mean change from pajamas into a pair of leggings or from pajamas into a pair of day pajamas like i see that meme going around and it makes me really upset but um what is a good guideline for getting dressed when working from home you don't need to have on a full face of makeup or a statement necklace but throw on a simple pair of earrings you know um and dress as if you're meeting a friend for coffee yes. and i don't mean like your best friend that it's okay to meet after you have a sweaty workout at the gym and you grab some starbucks not that kind of but imagine if if it's a friend from college you haven't met in a long time or you know um somebody that you haven't seen in a while how would you dress you don't want to like you're not going to dress up in a ball gown but you're probably going to wear something nice like a jean like a pair of jeans and a nice blouse maybe you will put on some lip gloss maybe you'll dry shampoo your hair treat yourself as if you are a friend you haven't met in a long time yes i agree cuz like me i always before when i was not really consciously of really just you know preparing myself and just go as you know show up as you can kind mm -hmm. of a thing um it was really more stressful but when you get into the habit of really just you know dressing up yeah. um dressing up in a way that is comfortable presentable that if you have a client that hey can we hop on on a zoom right now and just to talk about a project or a website i can yeah i'm ready and the client will whoa did you just put on your makeup or something like no I just started my day like this, you know, and and me my my I mean I always just put on my eyebrows. I think that's one thing that I always do because I have a thinner one, you know, yeah. kind of that accentuated or a lipstick or just a blouse and yeah, that that is really something that really helps. And it actually just, you know how it is sometimes when you're so confined in your bedroom or in your house and you just it's just like it just lifts you up as well 100%. when you try to just show up and dress up. 100% um you know when uh, when people are trying to create like a good work exercise routine people say oh um before you go to bed at night leave your um clothes your gym clothes right at your bedside some people will even go far as to say sleep in your gym clothes so when you wake up you're just ready and raring to go well i'm not saying like sleep in your jeans but there's a reason why because getting dressed for the gym puts you you're like oh now i took all this struggle to dress up i guess i should you know yeah. take the next step right yes so that's true. maybe if you change out of your um sweats that you wear to netflix and chill mm -hmm. you will be inspired to write that blog post you will be inspired to do that live and it's inspired action is where it's at right now you know that is true that is so true yes so so savvies i hope you are really enjoying all you know all the tips that is being shared to us because you know when you are building your personal brand it goes beyond just the color the website and everything right okay now is of course um how can they actually um you have been offering lots of wonderful service that can really help of course others maybe they decide you know what i need i think a little bit more help or maybe i need a little bit more consultation as well to bring in more of the confidence that i have because I want to show up for 2020 um, despite what is happening right now right with all the quarantine how can they actually reach you or tell us a little bit more of the things that you offer that can really help our fellow savvies here in savvy well, chic design so you can um, you know visit my website i actually have an awesome resource my website is style remix and it has two xs.com Uh, and there i have actually an awesome freebie it's a five step guide to uh, editing your closet so get the guide edit your closet i'll also send you some uh, tips on finding your personal style looking good on camera all kinds of fun stuff so uh, you can go to my website check it out you can also uh, read uh, profiles of women that i worked with uh, you can follow me on instagram at style.remix again to xs and uh, that's where you will see my you know daily hustle daily grind with my kids and and also a little bit about more about what i do and the women i work with uh, there is linkedin as well if you like linkedin you can connect with me on that and only for your savvies i have a special deal so 
I am, I do also offer virtual consultations, obviously, since we're all homebound and a lot of people may not be near me in New Jersey. So I am offering to create 20 outfits for you with the things that are already in your closet. Okay, and we'll do all of this virtually and they will be delivered to you um, via Dropbox or whatever else at, into Instagram style outfits uh, like flat lays and they look really cute and it's super fun. Um, you can see how the possibilities are with the stuff that's already there. And um, so that, uh, you know, I'm offering a huge discount on that. But if you have other uh, questions, style questions, you can uh, PM me or DM me on Instagram and we can definitely, you know, see what your needs are and how I can help you out. So uh, they all they have to mention is that they heard us on this Facebook Live or podcast. And wow, that's awesome. Well, we'll surely give you more details in this broadcast in the description um, to make sure that you can avail of that. Guys, you know, when you have time, because we have a lot of time right now. I mean, having an expert check on our closet. Hallelujah. Just make sure, though, to clean a little bit. <laughs> no, you don't have to. No judgment. You don't have to. All right, no judgment. My, my, my personal closet does not look like it came from the container store. So there you go. <laughs> well, now you're safe, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a wonderful thing about, you know, connecting with awesome experts is that um, SwapNet, thank you so much for, you know, giving your expertise. Thank you. Especially thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. And especially that you are trying to really create such a wonderful opportunity. And thank you so much for all our wonderful viewers right now who are tuning in in our podcast and our broadcast. We truly do appreciate you. Now, is there anything else that you would like to share or anything um, before we end our um, our broadcast for today? You know, I say get up, dress up, show up. There you go. All right, ladies, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've actually enjoyed it pro uh, this broadcast. So every month, I create a savvy connection, and we're in. I bring in experts in different fields that can really help you build your brand, be more confident, and really find that you know that you are such a unique being that you need to show up and dress up and be more confident right so please do make sure to follow our special guest make sure to follow her in her instagram and book your free or your consultation with her because i bet she will be giving a lot of tons of help not just to really you know dress you up confidently but really have moving forward to know what are the wardrobes and the styles that can really help you build your brand again guys my name is joanna i'm the creator and founder of savvy chic design thank you so much for tuning in please do share or show some love if you've enjoyed this broadcast. You all have a wonderful day ahead. Bye.